welcome to episode 178 of the Cricket Her Weekly. Now, the 100, first of all, Sid, um, because what's the current situation, although with a big caveat that this may well be out of date by the time people are watching slash listening to this? Yes, um, so as it stands, obviously there's two games happening today, we're recording on Saturday, so, um, but right now the Brave and the Pop Chips, yes. uh, otherwise known as the Northern Superchargers, have both qualified. Woohoo! Um, and um, so uh, we've got three teams out now, Phoenix, Spirit and the Originals are all out. Okay. Um, and as I say, things could, things could move on again today. Basically, both Invincibles and the Rockets need to win today. Um, and if either of them drop points, if, it, if they lose or it rains then the fire will have qualified today as well. And we'll know our, okay. our remaining teams with six games left. So, you know, the groups, they just have been a bit weird this year. It's been, you know, it's kind of three teams at the top the whole way, really. And, mm -hmm. you know, the rest of the teams at the bottom. But, you know, right now, as it stands, it's still possible that Rockets or Invincibles could actually pull it off. OK, but also two, most likely two new teams in the in the finals, which is really exciting, isn't it? So the fire and the superchargers um, motoring along. Yeah, the superchargers are charging, the fire are on fire. The brave are brave. brave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one didn't work, did it, Sid? Not really. Okay. Now, we actually attended the 100 yesterday, but not in the media centre. So it was the match at Lords. Um, it was the London Spirit against the Pop Chips, against the superchargers. Um, we were in the crowd, and that was a whole new experience, wasn't it, Sid? Yeah, we were in the grandstand. We came along with a friend um, of mine who um, is someone that's watched a bit of cricket on television, but it was like it was the first like professional cricket game that he'd ever been to, um, and um, it was his first time ever at Lords. Mm. Um, he wasn't hugely familiar with kind of the hundred as a concept, so he wasn't like sure about how the overs thing worked. He had to ask about that. Um, but you had to say, "I'm sorry, you're not allowed to use the word overs." <laughs> Because that doesn't exist. Yeah, um, we had to stop the stewards from ejecting him from mentioning the word <laughs> overs. Uh, but no, seriously, he, he enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, we did as well. We had a, we had a great time. Um, there's a couple of observations that, um, that we made from, from being there in the crowd, because it is a little bit different. Um, you know, and it's just nice to have a different view sometimes, I yeah, suppose. Definitely. You know, literally a different angle, because we were side on rather than, you know, almost invariably be behind the bowler's arm when you're in, in the media centres and things. Yeah. Um, but a couple of things. So, you know, we went and bought a drink, didn't we, Raf? Um, or rather, we went and bought four drinks. We bumped into another friend there as well. I was we like, I'll buy you a drink. We weren't wearing our press passes, though. We weren't. Um, you know, we were there to have, We were there as spectators yeah. to have fun. So we went and bought, bought, I went and ordered four drinks. Yeah. And the guy was like, sorry, I can't sell you four drinks. I have to sell you two drinks. And then I have to give you your card back. And then you can order another two drinks. And then you, you, you can buy them as, as well. And it's just like, and he was like, oh, it's, li it's licensing reasons. And it's like, well, what's really going on with this? I mean, just like, it's a total dance. Because Westminster City Council, who issue the licence for, for Lords to sell alcohol, must know that this is going on. Yeah. Um, so they've said, well, you can only buy two drinks at once, but you can then immediately buy another two yeah. drinks. What a waste of very everybody's weird. time. It's very just weird. very strange. Yeah. So that was strange. Um, the other thing I wanted to raise was a little observation that my friend made. Um, as I say, he's watched a little bit of cricket on television, so he, he basically knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he understood that in cricket you can't really tell who's winning and who's losing. But what he did observe, that he had absolutely no context during the second innings about how well the Northern Pop Chips were doing. He was like, well, but how many, how many you know, did Spirit make at this point? Mm -hmm. you know, when they had the, the 50 overs, uh, sorry, 50 balls, <laughs> Um, he was like, okay, well, they've got, after 50 balls, how many have they got? And then, in fact, then, they did immediately, actually, on 50 balls, yeah. they did say The crowd announcer said, so, um, oh, at, this, at point, this point, the London Spirit had made this many for this many But goals. that was the only time yeah. they did that, and there was no other indication in game about how well the pop, pop chips were doing in their chase, and he really felt that that would have been something that would have been more useful. So maybe that's something that they could, you know, consider in terms of, like, being able to incorporate that a bit more so that those more casual fans can have a vague idea about how well the chasing team is doing. One other thing that I thought was a bit weird um, was that I was coming back to my seat and somebody was in the middle of bowling a set. Um, and um, so I waited, I got to the top of the stairs and I waited and the steward turned around to me and said, oh, don't worry about that. You can go back to your seat whenever you want. This is the hundred. We don't bother about that, which I thought was really interesting. So they've obviously abandoned this idea that you can only go to your seat between sets or between ends or whatever it would be. 
um, in 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 the hundred. That's that's clearly yeah, never that been makes, a that thing. That makes sense, I guess. But you know, well, it isn't. does it make sense? Because wouldn't that be really frustrating from a spectator experience perspective to just have people continually? I mean, that's why they do it in other forms of cricket mm. is to prevent people interrupting your viewing experience. Yeah, I mean, people came and sat down next to us, you know, or in front of us when when things were going on. I didn't yeah. really have a problem with that. I, I didn't didn't. No, that but so. because they weren't doing it multiple times frequently. Anyway, interesting, interesting. It's it's obviously been drilled into the stewards. This is the hundred. This is it's a very different. different experience. Yeah, we need to try and make, create yeah. that create that kind of simplified experience, yeah. which means you don't we we don't implement silly rules except about buying beer. But of course, as most doing, the beer thing's nothing <laughs> no. to do with Lords. It's, this is Westminster as, well, City that's Council our understanding. imposing yeah. bizarre set of rules that... Yeah. Mm. Anyway. anyway. Okay, so that was that was yesterday's match um, and obviously the Pop Chips ended up winning off the penultimate ball. So it was a good, it was a good one to take your friend to because it was an exciting finish. Um, now, we are going to talk about the uh, the elephant in the room, which is the England squad. Big news this week. Um, but before we do that, actually, just yesterday, um, there's been some very bizarre news coming out of South Africa, hasn't there, Sid? Yeah, I mean, well, there was actually two separate pieces on Crick Info um, by Firdos, who's the um, the kind of the women's cricket, South Africa cricket correspondent yeah. from South Africa. Um, and the, the long and the short of it is that it seems that Sine Luz has basically asked to step down from the captaincy of South Africa. Um, you know, the, the original thing was that she's, she's stepping down and then it was like, well, she's asked to step down and she, she, it was her choice to step down. Um, she was given the captaincy though, wasn't she, Raph, only, you know, six months ago. Yeah. And, it, you know, there seems to be some potentially some issue with the coach. What's, what's going on? What's she... Well, she actually led them to a World Cup final. That's been her. Um, that's been something that she's done and achieved for them as a team. Um, there was an earlier piece, um, maybe a week or a couple of weeks ago, about Hilton Mareng, the coach, um, with basically suggesting that some of the players had written to Cricket South Africa and said, um, "Actually, we're not massively happy with Hilton. So could you find somebody else?" And the board have basically said, "No, we're sticking with him." And the reaction to this seems to have been that Sune Luz has therefore said, okay, well, I'm not going to be the captain anymore. Um, and they're now talking about maybe bringing in like Laura Wolver or somebody like that as captain. But given that um, the letter saying, please, can we get a new coach seems to have come from a collective of players, it's not a very good example of happy times in, in South African women's cricket. And we've seen quite a lot of that recently, actually. I was thinking about the Hilton Moreng thing. Now, you could oh, you could look at it and go, OK, well, arguably, you know, he's just coached them to a World Cup final. So that's that's successful. Um, but he's been he's been coached for um, 11 years, 11 years. That's the equivalent of England still having Mark Lane as their coach. Wow. I mean, that's just bonkers, isn't it? So that's who that's who the England coach was in 2012. Since then, we've had um, four different coaches. Um, I, I was working this out yesterday. We've had Paul Shaw, Mark Robinson, Lisa Kiteley, and now obviously we've got John Lewis. And throughout that whole time, a kind of, a time of huge change in women's cricket, South Africa have kept the same coach. That's just mad, isn't it? Um, you know, I, I don't really care how successful you are in a way. There are, uh, coaches have a, have a shelf life, don't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I you know, no one else has carried on that long. Yeah, so. and the other weird thing, I mean, even even with Australia, who have been immensely successful in that time, have, have kind of burned through coaches because you just naturally do. The other um, thing that's kind of a bit irritating about it is Cricket South Africa's attempt <laughs> to present it as, oh, well, it's just kind of natural because Sune Luz was only given the captaincy on a temporary basis, um, kind of temporarily replacing Donay van Nierkirk, and now we're going to make somebody else a permanent captain. And you go, no, we were at the World Cup. We were in we were the press in conferences press conference, yes. when you literally said, oh, yes, she's a brilliant Sunelis. captain and she is now the permanent she's the captain. She's the permanent captain. Nobody, nobody yeah. corrected that impression. No. She, Sune herself and she said, said I, the... I now feel like I am the captain of this team. I'm on a permanent basis and on, you know, going forwards. So it's Cricket South Africa's attempt to rewrite Busy history. rewriting history. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah so that's that's very frustrating from a kind of media perspective because again it's similar to the stuff that happened um last summer with with Lizelle Lee um trying to present one thing when actually we know that something else is going on behind the scenes it's all very strange and really a very unhealthy environment yeah well and we just have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks i mean the laura wolfart thing i mean they're, they're... You know, the media are talking about Laura Wolfar as the next captain on the grounds that she's the obvious person. But she's best friends with Sunny Lou, so I can't yeah. imagine that Laura Wolfar's massively happy about the whole thing, seeing no. as her, her best mate is, has obviously been, you know, done over by the system here, yeah. and they're trying to rewrite history around that. I mean, Laura Wolfar's going to be looking at that and going, I'm not sure I want to be part of that. Yeah. That doesn't mean that she won't take the job, but, you know, she's definitely, I mean, Laura Wolfar is not stupid, right? No. She's very, know, the, the opposite. She, no, she could have gone to yeah. medical school and, you know, yeah. she's super smart, so she knows what's going down there. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Talking of craziness by cricket boards, Sid, let's talk about the, the England, England squad. squad. <laughs> so England on Friday um, announced their squad for their three ODIs and three T20s against Sri Lanka, which are happening quite soon, um, almost immediately after the end of the 100, because they've got to fit them all in so that Sri Lanka can fly off um, to play in the Asia Cup um, at the end of September. So let's start with the good news. Let's 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 take a, a positive slant on this first of all. Um, there's been a couple of um, inclusions in the squad that we are really excited about. Um, so Maya Boucher is the first one. We talked about her at length on last week's episode, so we won't go into that again. But suffice but it to say, not only is she in the squad, Raf. Well, John Lewis has said that she is going to open the batting with Danny Wyatt in the T20s. Um, so that's that's going to be great because she's going to have three T20s where she knows that um, she's not fighting for her place and she can just relax into it um, and have have a, an opportunity to show what she can do in international cricket. So that's really exciting for her. Um, but I was just going to say, suffice it to say, she's very much earned it with her form in domestic cricket um, and recently in the 100 for the Brave. Um, the other inclusion that I know you're really pleased about, Sid, is Bess Heath. Yeah, so they brought her in, um, and uh, again, John Lewis has said pretty much that everybody's going to play. Cap everybody gets caps. Uh, he's pretty much he said that. Of, he, he, yeah, I mean, he kind of has. He gave himself a little bit of wriggle room, but yeah. he basically said that we're going to we're going to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity here, um, mm. which which is uh, that, and that itself is quite interesting. It's a little bit of an about turn because Lisa Kitely, for, when presented with a similar question, yeah. I remember in a press conference like. Three years ago or so, her going, oh, you know, you don't, you don't just find a cap lying around, you know, you, you have to really earn it. So yeah. we're not, we're not in the business of awarding caps to people just because they've been selected in the squad. Which is a very Australian attitude, I'm yeah, say. Yeah, but this is a very different, very different environment, and I think it's probably the right thing to do. So, um, uh, yeah, so hopefully Bess Heath gets to make her debut, and they've also explicitly said that she's been brought in as cover for Amy Jones. So they're clearly they're starting to think about you know how they move on from Amy Jones yeah. at the point where Amy Jones retires yeah. or, or potentially you know does get injured. I mean, you know, wicket keeping is a is a position yeah. where people do you know have injuries. So yeah, that's, and that's, um, really and that's, that's, that's yeah. on merit as well. Bess Heath selection definitely. She's had a really good season. Uh, you know, she's been very positive with the bat. You know, I've not shied away from the fact that her wicket keeping definitely needs work. You know, but you know she'll get the chance to work with some different coaches as part of the England squad, um, which is important for her uh, in terms of like developing her wicket keeping mm. uh so you know great news for her great okay um but <laughs> the, there's been some there be there's, there's there's been some odd choices as well um now i think there's probably the strangest for me is the omission of tammy beaumont from she is in the odi squad as she was in the ashes but she's not in the T20. Well, she's sports. just not a short form cricketer. After there's absolutely, there's absolutely nothing that's that's happened in the past the past week. You know, <laughs> playing for Welsh Fire. You know, um, that's that's given any, any indication that she's a short form cricketer. <laughs> yeah, I love that you can say that with a straight face. That's brilliant. Of course, she did have her record breaking innings. And she is on our backdrop today. Um, she had her record breaking innings earlier this week against the Rockets, um, where she hit the highest score in the men's or the women's hundred, and it was an absolutely spectacular innings. Um, and actually, somebody um, in the John Lewis press conference said, "John, did you know? Like, did you know about the hundred um, when you were making these <laughs> did you selections? Know about the 100? Did, you know <laughs> yeah, did, did you know about it? <laughs> well, and I'm looking at some of the selections. He doesn't appear to. Um, and and you know, did, was this was this squad selected weeks ago before the hundred started um, in the wake of the Ashes? 
um, and just kind of, you know, independently of the hundred, um, which is a fair question. And he was like, oh, no, 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 it's all, it's all been done with the hundred in mind. And you're like, what? <laughs> I just can't understand. And he said, oh, um, you know, I've, I've had a chat to Tammy and obviously she's not too happy about it. It's like, yeah, mate, yeah, I wonder why. Um, but he, he basically said, oh, I know how Tammy will play against Sri Lanka, but I don't know how Maya Boucher will play against Sri Lanka. So I've gone with having Maya Boucher as the opener um, and Tammy Bowman. Well, you could have made exactly the same argument about Danny White. Right? I know. Right. But I know you can make the same argument about any about anyone. You know, well, I know how I know how Sophie Eccleston is going to play against Australia, so let's not bother because you know we might <laughs> as well bring somebody else in. Anyway, t- talking of which, um, there's also um, a, a thing where they have um, they're resting some players. So Sophia Dunkley and Sophie Eccleston are being rested for both series, I believe, um, and. Um, Nat Silver Brunt is being rested for the. I need to get this the right way around. Nat Silver Brunt's being rested for the T Twenties, and um, Danny Wyatt's Danny being Wyatt's for being ODIs. rested for the ODIs. Thank you, Sid. So um, that is so. That's kind of your four four of your biggest cheeses there. Now, Ralph, Ralph I'm 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 confused about okay. this. I'm confused about it because. Six months or so ago, when we were coming up to the WPL, I said I was concerned that the WPL and things was going to start affecting international cricket. Um, and everyone said I was talking nonsense. They did. And yet these players have been playing in franchise tournaments. They did, like, every, all of those have yeah. either played in WPL or played in fair break. And now we've come to the end of the English summer and they're knackered. Yeah. Why, what if, if England knew that Nat Siver was knackered, why is she playing in the 100? Yeah. Why? You know, ditto Sophia, because why is Sophia, why withdraw her from the, which is the priority? What's your priority, guys? Yeah. International cricket or the 100? Yeah. Or WPL? 100, or fair break? Fair break, yeah. I mean, fair break's the biggest, honestly, the biggest nonsense of them all. I know, I've said the unsaidable. So well, fair, fair break is nonsense. It's not a top level cricket tournament. You know, fair, fair break, you know, you know, a fair break to them, good luck to them, but that is not a top level cricket tournament. And yet people are going off and paying for it, playing in it. And now coming back in September, going, oh, I'm too tired, and we're not, I'm not going to play in a proper international series yeah. where ICC Championship points are at stake. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I am, I am flabbergasted. And the, I just wonder whether some of this is um, is being presented as people being rested, but is partly to save face because um, Sophia Dunkley did not have a very good. Ashes. Well, I see you're thinking Dunks might have actually been dropped. Well. Wow. It, it would be harsh, but I wish they would be honest because she did not, she did not, arguably, she did not face enough balls in the women's ashes for her to now say, I'm a bit tired to be playing, um, to, to be playing against Sri Lanka in September. There are plenty of, plenty more players who face way more balls in the ashes who um, could, could also equally, play, you know, like Tammy Beaumont. I made two double hundreds in that series um, and I've just made the hundred against Welsh Fire. Please, will you rest me? Um, but she wouldn't do that, of course. Of course. Um, so, with the dunks thing, I'm just a little bit sceptical about that. I have to say, the other the other thing is Sophie Eccleston. Is it's so frustrating because we were really critical during the test, and we said you played one front line spinner, and she's going to bowl an immense amount of overs, and she's got she's got a whole season ahead of her still, and she's going to be really tired. Oh Everyone no! Like, oh no! Oh, no, no. no. It's, it's, it's fine. She loves no, she, bowling. She loves bowling. Uh, she's got a really easy action, really repeatable action, and she'll be absolutely fine. And now we're at, at the later. yeah. Oh no, she's too tired to be playing. Well, which is it, guys? It's it's really kind of short termism, um, you know, and, and and also like I feel vindicated. A lack of respect for yeah. international cricket for yeah. Sri Lanka. It will serve yeah. England right if yeah. England lose one of those ICC yeah, championship games. Yeah, it absolutely games. would. And because you know, tomorrow Atapattu has a great game or or whatever, and you know. <laughs> And they wind up dropping more points, having already dropped points to India, as, yeah. as well as dropping point, a load of points to Australia. You know, England are actually, you know, if they end up having to go through a qualifying tournament because they've yeah, ended, dropped points course, against Sri Lanka. Eccleston won't play because she'll be too tired. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the other, th- other thing um, in, in the midst of all this is, of course, England have called up Mahika Gore um, to the squad, um, 17 years old. Um, seen as the new the new big shiny thing in in fast bowling. Now, that's that's really exciting for her. Um, but um, England have this obsession with like a big new shiny thing in fast bowling, 
and it's really not working out for them particularly well and there's no there doesn't seem to be any level of consistency in the selections in terms of the fast bowling it's all kind of um wham bam one person after another we've had Freya Kemp who was then mismanaged and got injured um again another 17 year old fast bowler possibly selected too early 17 year old and has already had basically a career threatening in yeah. injury um, we've had um, Emily Arlott, um, who was in and around the squads last summer and, and the summer before, nowhere to be seen. Um, apparently, I've been told um, by um, somebody who's been around the Spark squad via Twitter that she's had shin splints this summer. Well, nobody said that publicly. Nobody's, nobody's made an announcement to say, oh, well, actually, we would love to have had her in the squad, but she's been injured. So she seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, we've had Izzy and Wong. she's still playing, so... She is. We've had Izzy mm -hmm. Wong, um, who... Um, was obviously came kind of burst onto the scene last summer. Was very exciting. Hasn't played a game for England. Um, and she was in all the Ashes squads, yeah. and they didn't select her. Yeah, and so people were going, "Hang on, is something going on here?" And finally, Birmingham Phoenix this week have actually come out and forced the ECB's hand and said, "Yes, there is something wrong. Her confidence is shot, um, and so she's actually not going to play in the next few women's hundred games because we need to work on her if runner. Run up, There's right. some kind of technical issue with her run up." It's like, okay, so did England know about that and they just didn't say anything? Or it's again, it's the withholding of really important, relevant information. And why, why were they selecting her for the squads? Why do they continue to select a player for the squads? <laughs> I mean, they know knows, isn't going to play. Yeah. Almost certainly isn't going to play because she's got huge technical issues going yeah. on. I mean, I, you know, and we don't know what the reason for this, but, you know, she's being pushed and pulled around a lot. Yeah. And even Birmingham Phoenix going, oh, we're going to fix her run-up. What, guys, are you going to fix her run-up in, like, a week? Yeah. After, you know, a load of different coaches have been presumably have trying to fix it for the last year. Yeah. Oh, man. Now... And John but, Lewis actually was asked about this in the presser, by the way. He was asked about Izzy Wong, and he said, oh, yeah, um, yes, oh, actually, yes, she has been having issues this summer, and that should have been obvious to everyone. It's like, well... It wasn't actually. Well, it was obvious she was having issues because she was bowling. You didn't talk, but you didn't talk about it. So, so if she's having issues, why on earth didn't you talk about it before, until Birmingham Phoenix um, forced your hand? And then, oh, well, you know, we like to have her close by um, because her confidence has taken a knock and, and we think that kind of we can, we, we, you know, we want to feel like we're supporting her. And it's just so weird because do you really think that a player gets more out of being 12th man and running drinks with England? than they do with being in their region. It shows a lack of trust in the regional coaching system, actually. Well, also, she's been around England all that time and they haven't fixed they the haven't problems. They haven't done anything, I know. So, so that's, that's so really weird. On, that? And also on the Freya Kemp thing, John Nurse said, oh, but, oh yeah, she's not going to bowl. She can't bowl yet because she's still coming back from injury. Okay, so... So why, I mean, why is she in the squad? She's, so you've got, she's an exciting batter, You've selected, batter, you've selected two players in your squad who aren't going to bowl. Because Izzy Wong's not presumably not going to play unless she miraculously sorts out her technical issues, and Freya Kemp isn't going to bowl. So, what's the what? Yeah, I mean, that's play, really strange. Freya Kemp as a, as a, you know, Freya Kemp can give the ball a whack definitely as a batter, and she's she's you know a great option to going forwards to have at like you know number seven or eight. But um, at this stage, it does not look like Freya Kemp is going to mature into a, the next Matt Silver and be able to you know bat in the top four. Um, you know, maybe she'll she'll develop out of that, but, yeah, but you know, it's that's still, so it's another odd selection. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a risky selection. Anyway, I was on my rant about this kind of chaotic um, attempt to try and replace Catherine Silverbrunt. Freya Davies appears to have been dropped, despite having the well, not appears to have she has been dropped. She's not in the squads, having having played one match in the women's ashes, been given one opportunity and one T twenty to show what she can do. Um, she was she played in all the um, England A matches against Australia, right? And had the best figures. And Mahika Gore, by the way, also played in those games and had the, had the worst figures. Um, okay, she's young, la la la. But it's not a consistent approach. They're not, they're not selecting people based on numbers. And I'm sorry, but you cannot um, make a, an informed decision about somebody's abilities in international cricket based on one T20. Yeah, no. And what have they said about Mahika Gurraf? I mean, let's you know. I mean, let's we we shouldn't be too too down on her. I mean, she's an exciting prospect, definitely. But let let's be realistic. Now, first of all, she's seventeen years old, and we've already broken one seventeen year old yeah. in the last year. For exactly. Him, um, with as I say, on, sadly, a potentially career threatening injury. Um, you know, is that, you, I mean, Mahika has got perhaps a more repeatable action than Freya Kemp, as that is an argument there. But, you know, 
why why have they selected her so early? Um, you know, because the numbers just do not justify yeah. this. I'm sorry, but I know the, the ECB's press release said, oh, she led the... Um, the, the attack in the Rachel Hay O'Flynn. But the, her numbers were not good in the... In the no, but no, they had Her numbers been. were good in fair break yeah. against a load of associate players, but her numbers in the RHF and the Charlotte Live was are really not great. Um, the, the one justification I can think of is they're trying, to, they're trying to lock her in. Because obviously if she gets an England cat now, she can't go off to Australia this, right. this winter and potentially you know, pull an Australian ah, cat out of the Ah, of course. Um, That's interesting. So, you know, so it's to prevent her being poached. That, that, there's, there's the potential for that okay. kind of thing to happen. Mm, so you know, if Australia were to offer her a load of money, she, I think she'd only need to live there for, for a year. So if she went there this winter and someone liked her, they could offer her a load of money to stay for a year and then they could give her an Australia cap and then she'd be locked in for Australia. Mm. So England are going to lock her in by doing this. But otherwise, it, you know, it makes no sense. I mean, and even John Lewis even said, "Yeah, well, well he's, John Lewis yeah, Sandra? he said um, she's not going to play every game." First of all, um, that so, means she's almost certainly going to play. From yeah, what he said, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, they wouldn't presumably they wouldn't call her up, but it does. It's it's part of this kind of slightly chaotic thing of like, oh, oh, she's exciting. Oh, there's a bit of noise around her. Let's bring her in and play her for a game and see what she can do and and chuck her in um, without there being that kind of consistent calm approach to actually giving a proper assessment of somebody so basically yeah she's going to play maybe the odd one or two games and he also said we're doing that to see if she's ready for international cricket to see if she's ready. i mean don't you know aren't you paid to know this i mean you know maybe we should see if raf's ready maybe we should see if my goldfish is ready i mean my goldfish died in 1978 and i'm not even 100 percent convinced the goldfish was female but you know Let's see if she was ready. Yeah, yeah, let's let's have a go. Let's see. So it's again that that line does actually, I must say, smack of slight disrespect to Sri Lanka, because what you're basically doing is going, well, we wouldn't we wouldn't play these players in the World Cup and we wouldn't play these players in a um in an Ashes series, but hey, it's Sri Lanka, so we're just gonna throw people in and and you know, just see whether they might be ready for international cricket. Um and again <laughs> It's, you can totally see them bringing Mahika Gore in, her getting a couple of games, and then they just leave her out in the cold next summer for a for another couple of summers, right? Because they'll just go, oh yeah, well we we had we had a look and we decided she wasn't ready for international cricket, and it was a it was a weird line from John Lewis. It was a really strange thing to say, I think. Um, and like yeah, so. Gosh, I think we've so ranted about this for over 10 minutes, in, Sid. Much shaking of the head in Cricket Her Towers. Yeah, when, you know. just so many so many weird decisions, so many weird selections. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just feel a little bit weird about the whole Sri Lanka series now. It feels like it's yeah. not being treated massively seriously. Yeah, and yeah, don't even get me started on Grace Rivens, who has been <laughs> dropped from the spirit side by Heather Knight. Yeah, I um, know. And hasn't been given an opportunity by Heather Knight, despite the fact that the people that played with her in those England eight games when she was captain reckon she did a pretty good job. Yeah. So, hmm, why would Heather Knight want to put Grace Scrivens back in her box? Hmm. I don't know. Sure, can't, can't, imagine. can't imagine a reason, Sid. Anyway, let's wrap up there. We would love to know your thoughts on the England squad as well. Um, there's been a lot of chat um, flying around on Twitter, but please do um, comment below the line, um, send us a YouTube comment, send us a comment on Twitter, um, and we could maybe read some of those out on next week's show when we're going to be. They're, if they're printable. If they're printable. <laughs> Um, uh, well, we will be at the at the hundred final, I guess. Yeah, which is very exciting. Okay, um, thank you for tuning in, everybody. See you in a week's time. Bye. Bye.